I'm going to say complete hot mess. I had no idea what I was doing with my life. I was drinking excessively, partying a lot, and kind of just like numbing everything out. It just wasn't a particularly happy time, but then I went trail running for the first time and it was like everything clicked into place. And I was like, yeah, this is what I want to do. This, this is it. <laughs> And I spent a really large portion of my childhood growing up between Germany and the UK. I think when I look back, Germany is definitely one of the happiest memories. I do have a super outdoorsy family. We would always be like hiking and skiing and always just up in the mountains. I mean, we lived in a place that was completely built for that. So yeah, I had, I had a really great childhood with that. And then, you know, of course we moved and you start to get older and things start to change. I didn't really have a great time in school. I just never really quite fit in. My final year of high school was pretty brutal. It definitely took me to some really just dark places. I realistically didn't think that I would be here now, but I'm really happy that I am. After high school, I went to university. I started coming out of my shell. I made sure that I went to university that like nobody at my school would basically go to. I studied film and TV and I ended up graduating right as the pandemic hit. I'm declaring a public health emergency. COVID-19. COVID-19 as the coronavirus pandemic spreads. The coronavirus. So I basically was like, cool. I've just graduated from university. I have this degree. Then everything is shut down. I ended up working on film sets in the AD department for about two years after that. But I think towards the end of it, I just realized that I had zero Wi-Fi balance. I was going out every weekend, drinking basically every day by myself. Like, and it just wasn't fulfilling or sustainable at that point anymore. I ended up going to visit a girlfriend in Sydney. And I was like, all right, cool. I'm just going to go there for the weekend, visit, you know what I mean? And I came up and I was like, huh, I don't know, but something in my gut is really telling me that I should stay here. So within a week of being there, I found a place to live. I moved in, didn't have a job, didn't have a plan. But I was like, no, nah, I need to be here. Now I'm definitely not going to lie and say that it was a particularly healthy life to begin with. Uh, there was definitely a lot of going out and partying in Sydney. And then I think it just reached a point where it was like, this is again, not sustainable. I'm miserable. My mental health is so bad. Like, what am I doing? And I'm back. That was the time that I made the decision to go sober. And it's been about a year and a half since then. And it's like the best decision I've ever made. Right after I got sober, I kind of started going to the gym and trying to focus a little bit on my health. And I think just in all honesty, it was a way to have routine in my life. Now, I'm not even gonna lie, I'm not gonna say that, oh, I went to the gym to become an ultra runner. Like that was, the idea of ultra running was like so far removed from my mind at that point. Like it just didn't even cross my mind. I think I did about eight weeks and was doing a lot of interval training. And I started to feel like pretty good, pretty fit. One day I was just like, ah, I wonder how far I can run. So I went outside and I ran for like 10 kilometers. And I was like, damn, yeah, I, I feel pretty good. And I was like, oh, I should, uh, I should sign up for a half marathon. Why not? I went and I had a look at it and I was like, ah, oh, there is a half marathon in Sydney. It's five days away. You should just sign up for it. <laughs> I signed up for that. And then I was like, oh, I'm gonna be really embarrassed if I can't actually do it. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go and I'm gonna run a half marathon tomorrow just to make sure that I can do it in four days time. So I went out the next day, ran a half marathon. I was, oh my God, I'm so exhausted. Like I, at that point, I'm like, it started running. I didn't know anything about running, about nutrition, about, gels like nothing like new zero <laughs> race day comes i just ran it and i felt pretty good i think my final time was like an hour 50. i was like yeah it's not bad it's like a really great baseline i think about three weeks after that i just like took the car drove south to a place that i found on a map and it was like yeah that looks really pretty let's just run that and i ended up running a marathon it took took forever it was not like this amazing like oh wow <laughs> 
like it took four and a half hours. It was miserable. It was a few weeks after that that I had started trail running. And I remember getting to a spot and I was just looking around and I was like, I just burst out crying. It was like, this is so beautiful. <laughs> and I was like, this makes me happy. This brings me joy. And this ultimately is helping me to become the best version of myself. I think I ended up running another marathon like a few weeks later. And I'm doing all these things and I'm building and I'm building. I was like, I'm gonna enter into an ultra. And it was like 50 kilometers. I didn't get to about halfway through and I just felt something go in my leg. You know, you have the pain where you're like, I'm uncomfortable, but you realistically can push through it. And there's the pain that you're just like, no, I need to stop. And I remember just being so angry and frustrated and sad. And I was like, damn, I had such a good pace. I was going so well. I felt like such a failure and it was just such a massive disappointment. There is a reason why ultra runners peak in their 30s rather than their 20s, like a lot of other traditional sports. And it's because it is years and years of mileage built up into your legs. It takes a long time. And so you definitely don't wanna rush it, which is what I did and I got injured. Injuries probably aren't gonna start coming until a couple months later. And then you realize, oh, I'm actually not that invincible. After that injury, I did a bit of rehab, took a little break and focused on strength training, nutrition, and started getting into, I guess, the more holistic approach to this whole thing. From there, I got better, I trained harder. And in February, I went to New Zealand and I ran my first official ultra marathon and I completed 100 kilometers at Terawira. Yeah, I'm not even gonna lie and sit here and be like, yeah, let's do it, it was great. Like, no, that was, it was hard. I, mean, I think it was kind of comforting that up until the 50 kilometer mark, I felt pretty good. Like I didn't really enter the pain cave until then. When I entered it, I realistically never left. It was just like, it came in waves of pain. And then I got to about 75 kilometers. My knees had kind of gone. My hip flexors were just gone. And so I ended up taping up my knees, which really saved me. And I just could not release my hips. It was so frustrating. I'm just walking, I'm like, damn, like as soon as your hip flexors, like they just go. It's hard enough to lift your leg, let alone run. And it's like, my, I want to run, my body is, just literally not letting me. And so it was just like an hour of just digging my thumbs into my hip flexors to release them until eventually I did. And then I just started running and I was in like a really nice flow state. But yeah, that was definitely, it was such a challenge. And it was just epic though. I had a great time. After I did the first one, I was like, all right, that's been awesome. Uh, I'm just gonna keep plugging away. I'm just gonna keep training. And I had my eye on this race in Indonesia and it was running out from Jani, which is a volcano in Lombok. So the one that I had entered into was 75 kilometers with 7,500 meters of elevation gain, which is so egregious. Like that is, such an aggressive amount of elevation. <laughs> Not to mention that you, we were gonna be running up a volcano. Like you literally, you know, you're taking one step and the step that you've just taken breaks away from under you, literally just crumbles. So I was kind of like, damn, maybe I have bitten off a little bit more than I can chew, but I was just so determined and like, I just wanted to, it was like, I wanna win this. And I just kind of wanted to, Proved to myself, made proof to others that I could. So I went training, and in May is when things went a little bit south. I was running in the mountains, and I was by myself. And I went to this trail that I had never been to before, and it was the start of the week, it was like on a Monday, and I had planned to go running that entire week, and it was about two weeks before the race. And I was like, all right, I'm just gonna do trail running the whole week. And trail that I'd never been on, completely empty, had a few hours of daylight left, quite a lot of elevation. Oh yeah, the trail was closed because of landslides. <laughs> don't, don't do that. My headspace was really weird as well. I just didn't feel like myself. I just didn't have 100% of my mental focus and energy on the run, which is what you need. I was just really tired and I remember running it. And as I'm running back, I don't know what happened. But obviously I just stepped funny and next thing I know I'm falling. And I just landed 
completely on my left ankle and all I felt was a series of pops. And I was just lying there on the ground and it took me like a few seconds to kind of come to. And I just remember yell at like letting out this massive scream. So again, I, I'm kind of looking around, I'm like, there is nobody coming to help me. <laughs> So I, I didn't even have my poles with me, so annoying. So I like grab a couple of sticks and I like hoist myself up and I'm just like trying not to hyperventilate and have a panic attack at this point. And yeah, I think I go for about two or three hours to get back to the car. And I knew, and the hard part was it was an hour back, so I knew the trail that I had to take to get back and like I couldn't even like I could put zero pressure on that foot and I knew that I think the way back there was like a river crossing to jump across like big stones there was like an entire just vertical uphill section that was quite technical I was like epic <laughs> but I made it back had a little breakdown in the car and then drove myself to the hospital and uh, it turns out it wasn't broken which is cool but uh, I don't really know what the technical term for it is, but essentially my ligaments were just shredded. <laughs> like, and I kind of look, I'm like, am I going to be able to race in two weeks? And they're like, no. <laughs> I remember it was the first time taking my shoe off as well. My foot is like the size of a golf ball, it's massive. And I was just so tired and sapped of energy. And so, I mean, again, I just felt like really disappointed. And I was just so upset and I was like, God, I can pick another obstacle, you know. But in retrospect, I was like, I don't know, I think it was a wet eat of the universe saying, you're not ready. Like, you just need to take some time. You need to evaluate why are you doing these races? Are you doing it because you love it or are you, are you doing it to prove something, you know? And just slow down. So in a way, I just think that it happened for a reason. And that entire week instead I spent going and doing ice baths and saunas, doing a lot of writing and reflection. And I think that was really helpful. I mean, the rest of 2023, I just traveled nonstop. So it was really hard to train and travel. I lived in Indonesia for basically six months out of the year. A routine can be really difficult when you're essentially living out of a suitcase. And I remember sort of coming to the end of 2023 and I was, you know, I was really happy with everything that I had achieved, but at the same time, I was like, also questioning a lot of things of like, oh, do I actually like ultra running? Was it just a phase? Was it X, Y, Z? And I was going through this entire thought process again of like, what am I doing? I think genuinely, what am I doing? But then as usual, I just restarted, reset, and I started training again. So I'm gonna go run New Zealand. And I think my focus and priority has shifted. Like I don't really care about getting gold medals or coming first place. I just care about running the trails that I want to run, doing the things that I want to do, being in nature, being able to travel to incredible places and communicate the stories that I want to communicate and feel that are important. It's definitely reignited again my passion for filmmaking and wanting to share what I do with the world. From dirtbag degenerate to uh, the ultra runner, you can definitely do it.